Our second speaker is Dr. Twafik Chowdhury, founder and president, Mercy Mission uh, World. Dr. Chowdhury is the chairman and CEO of the Mer Mercy Mission movement. Mercy Mission is one of the world's fastest growing social service enterprises, delivering innovative educational and social service programs to millions of people across the world. Dr. Chowdhury is a world-renowned Islamic scholar, as well as being an emergency specialist medical doctor in Australia. He is world-renowned speaker on Islamic social entrepreneurship, as well as business and corporate strategy and organizational development. He has recently been named as one of the top 500 most influential Muslims in the world. Let's welcome Dr. Chowdhury. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our session today in this really interesting and very appropriate uh, forum that we have. This is a presentation on wealth, on business and commerce and people and their reasons for getting into corporate uh, uh, business and commerce worldwide. Uh, I want to start off this question by asking this really important question. Why is it that the world today revolves around making money. For what reason are we in business? What is the reason for which we struggle and strive every single day to do what we do in making all the money that we do worldwide? If you ask any company out there, they're very clear on what they want to do. We want to increase shareholder value, we want to be uh, you know, every single book in the world under 60 seconds, that's Amazon. You know, we are in the business of making uh, kids happy, that's Disney. They know what they want to do, but the question is why. Peter Seng says in his book, The Fifth Discipline, the question of why cannot be answered. And that's the real tragedy today. That today, we can come to a conclusion that the most important reason for why we get out of bed today is the question that cannot be answered at all. And yet, Harvard Business Review says this. According to the Harvard Business Review, it says the single biggest motivator yeah, for success in any endeavor, in any field, is the answer to the question why. If anyone out there, any motivator, any leader, any CEO, any president can explain why. Yes, we can. Why? You know, if they, if they can answer why, then I'll tell you what. People will jump out of their beds to get up in the morning on Monday morning and they will not feel that Monday, Monday-itis or the Friday syndrome of, you know, super happy on Friday and super crappy on Monday. They will not feel that. They will love their Mondays and hate their Fridays. And the problem is we just have no idea. Do you know what the problem is today? Today we tell people different reasons of why. Why are we in business? Because we're going to increase shareholder value. Can you imagine any employee in your 100,000 people organization jumping out of bed saying, yeah, I'm going to go and increase shareholder value today. What? This cannot be the purpose of why, why we're in business. This cannot be the purpose of why we struggle and strive and compete in the way that we do. This cannot be the reason why we do this. If anything, humanity should have taught us that money should not be gained for the purpose of money itself. It's for what that money will help us achieve. The outcome is what is more important than the internal value of money itself. If we can answer the question why, believe me, the world will move at a faster pace towards solving its problems. Just like when you press down on the accelerator, you can rev at 1,000, 2,000 RPM. But if you can answer why, then you will inspire energy and action in humanity. The common people will become agents of change and they will understand the reason why they're doing what they're doing. And this is the failing of our leaders today, that they have yet to give us the energy of why and so we rev on 500 RPM. I think my car goes at 500 RPM, but we should be running at eight or nine. Move on. Look at this picture. Knowing a clear why gives us clear clarity and direction and focus on where we should be headed. Not understanding why we're doing what we're doing gives us a huge fuzzy picture of the, of the future. We just don't know what we want to do. Why are we doing it? Who's next? 
So if you are an Apple employee becoming the, the most richest company in the history of mankind, I mean, each Apple share is more than an iPad. Can you imagine that? This is how expensive the company is. And if you cannot answer why Apple exists and why Steve Jobs lived his life, if you cannot answer why and have an extremely moral why, then your life is only as good as that iPad. And you need to have far more value than that. You know, the most amazing thing is that my glasses have a purpose. My shirt, my jacket has a purpose. My shirt has a purpose. This phone in front of me recording my talk has a purpose. This microphone has a purpose. Everything seems to have a clear purpose and a clear why. But this human being, this noble human being in front of me has no clear purpose. This is incomprehensible. And this cannot be the level of intelligence that we, that we as human beings have reached. After so much, so much advances and so much knowledge, we must be far more clear on the why rather than just simply the what we do. Look at this man. Hardly your impression of the most inspiring leader. He's not handsome. He's not a hunk. He's not the most eloquent. He was an introvert. Not the 85% extrovert leaders that we have today. Yet he inspired a nation to throw out a kingdom upon which the sun never set. And this is Mahatma Gandhi, a man who inspired a nation of millions of people through simple things as not eating salt, not wearing so-and-so clothes, you know, abstinence from violence. Unbelievable. So if we can learn from some of these people who have changed countries, we will learn that indeed it is this understanding of why people do what they do that will inspire positive change and truly be able to answer the moral dilemmas that we live in today. You see, this is a, a crystal clear picture of what will happen if we have a why. One drop of water in the whole pond that will ripple with effect and create a huge tsunami. And this is what we're missing today, my dear friends. I dare say that this is what is missing in our purpose today, in our lives today. A clear reason of why we're in what we do. And corporations that run NMCs, multinational companies, MNCs that run the world today, not countries that run the world. It's the MNCs that run the world. They need to have clarity on the why. And the more their CEOs are directionless on the why, the more they will run their companies and the countries in which they work aground. So again, why? Because without a strong why, this is what happens. Move on, please keep pressing because there's a lot of slides. No, no, go back, go back, go back. This is, no, no, back, 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 back. Okay, slow. Next one, next one. Oh, okay, so PowerPoint is not showing clearly. Anyway, I had a really sophisticated, really nice PowerPoint slide here. It's not showing very clearly, but basically we're at A. If you have no understanding of why, you're either one of two people. You'll either end up like this uh, orange circle going here and there, left, right and center. We're doing this today, tomorrow that. Okay, we're innovating and this and that. Finally, by some mercy from God, you'll end up somewhere with some progress. But you've wasted so much resources and time trying to get there. The second way that could happen to you is if by some success you follow a competition that has a clear purpose, you tend to go towards your B, but then you go up and down, up and down, up and down all the way, wasting so much time and resources towards your vision and your final destination. On the other hand, if you're clear on your why, you go from A to B directly and you solve the problem at the least of concerns, at the least of time wastage and resource wastage. This is my experience with my life. When I myself was a young man, and I'm still a young, but when I was younger and a teenager and I had no clarity and purpose of what I was doing with my life, I was like a chicken with my head cut off. Have you seen a chicken when you cut the head off? What does it do? It's jumping up and down, left, right, and center. It doesn't know where to go. And that's precisely how our youth are today, directionless. If our schools do not give them direction, do not give them vision, inspire in them purpose, then they will end up becoming like these people. Moving on. So a rocking horse makes a lot of movement, but little progress. 
And this is truly what is happening with the world today. Lots of movement, lots of movement towards something or the other. But good Lord, towards what? And this is the challenge that we have and leaders today, my respected leaders, and you're all leaders in your fields, in your own spheres of influence. My sincere request is to take time out. Take your shoes off, walk on the grass, look at the prairies, look at the greenery, and think about why am I doing what I'm doing? Take a day off work and actually think about it. My request to all the CEOs of the world is be cl crystal clear on you leading this one million conglomerate, this army of a million people that is providing values and services to humanity. If only they were clear on the why, they would be so much more effective at solving moral dilemmas and problems of humanity today. Moving on. So why are we in business? I'm sure everyone's like, okay, come on, Tufik, just tell us why. <laughs> why did you just tell us? Okay, so I've got a bit of a shocking picture. Go ahead. Uh, just, just before that, okay, just before that, go ahead. This is a, a statement. Before that, please, go back. Go back, back, back. So you're giving away all my suspense. Okay, next one, please. No, next. Okay, that's it. Okay, all right. This is an important statement of Prophet Muhammad, the, the, the Prophet of, of Islam. He said, everyone is helped by Allah, Allah meaning God, if they do what they have been created for. And that's true, that's what we find today. That if someone focuses on something and really pursues what they really want to do, they do end up achieving it. And, and that's the whole point. That if we only had that clarity of purpose, we would then achieve exactly what we set out to achieve. So exa exactly why are we in business? So it's that picture. What's that picture? So I found this picture on the internet, which I don't know from where. It looks, looks really amazing picture. I don't know from which prison this is. But I thought it illustrated my point exactly. And that point is that these are all these people praying, and these are some of them might have been drug addicts, some of them might have been killers, some of them might have done so many, so many different types of crimes. But you can all, and p every sort of per person can find purpose in some sort of religion. They can find direction, they can find uh, absorption of their sins, they can find clarity of vision, they can turn over a new leaf, and this is the real blessing of having morality based upon a religion. And that is it gives you clarity of purpose. And this is the first reason why we should be in business, is that it should give you clarity of vision and purpose. The reason why you're doing it should be for a higher moral purpose, whatever your reason is, it, but it should be for that higher moral purpose. The second reason is this. What's this? These are the children and the humanity of the world. That's the second reason why we do what we do, which is to help the people of this world. I'm about to finish, and I'm going to take one more minute just because of all the slight changes, if you don't mind. <laughs> so according to the IMF, the number of people that are chronically hungry worldwide is 1.2 billion people in the year 2011. Okay? They published a report that said chronic hunger. What is chronic hunger? The gastric empty time of the tummy is about four hours. So chronic hunger is anyone who has not enough food for more than four hours, right? So you get only one meal. So that's chronic hunger. That means you, are, uh, you, know, you, you suffer all types of malnutrition. 1.2 billion people, that's one in six people on this earth is chronically hungry. That's a shame upon humanity, especially given the following fact. What is the cost of removing extreme poverty from this world today? The cost that was published by Oxfam in the report in 2012, they published a report, they said $60 billion is all it's going to take to remove extreme poverty so that we can provide water, sanitation, and uh, we can provide uh, basic, basic, basic health such as, which is immunizations, stop those diseases. So that's, remove extreme poverty and a roof over their head. 60 billion for 1.2 billion people. Economics of scale will play into the factor. And so 1.2 billion people will be looked after. But here is the, is the dilemma. What is the dilemma? The profit, I'm just talking about the profit. Yeah, the profit of the world's 100 I'm not even talking about the whole world. Of the 100 world's richest people in 2012 was 240 billion. Meaning in just one year, if they just donated 25% of their profit of one year, we could end extreme poverty in this world. Now will you tell me please, why is it that they're not doing it? I'll tell you why. 
because they don't know why they're in business. They've got no idea. So therefore, my, my respected elders and my respected gentlemen and gentlewomen, if we can answer this problem, just answer the question why, we'll solve all these problems. That's my statement today. Thank you. Wow. That made us think, didn't it? That was excellent. Very dynamic. Thank you so much. Let's give another hand for Dr. Chowdhury.